Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She's fair. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good. This one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket, and I'm not going to pay for it. Who says you're not going to pay for it? I make that decision, not you. She's honest. What do you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. Nothing. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. Lisa Matthews is suing Kristen Morris in the amount of $563. Ms. Matthews claims Ms. Morris borrowed money from her to attend their uncle's funeral. But not only did she not repay the loan, she never showed up at the funeral. Ms. Morris claims she drank too much and got a hangover because she was thinking about her uncle's death. And she claims that's the reason she didn't attend the funeral. In the matter of Lisa Matthews versus uh, Kristen Morris, I understand you are two sisters? Cousins. Cousins, first yeah. cousins. Um, you bought a plane ticket for her to come to your uncle's funeral. You didn't show up, Ms. Morris. You want your money back. Yes, I sure do. All right, talk to me. She owes me the money for a plane ticket, $563. She didn't show up to do the eulogy she put herself on a program to do the eulogy. She promised she would do it. She didn't want anybody else to have that position because Uncle Martin was like a father figure to both of us, mainly her because her father was not around. He was also her godfather. And she oh. didn't show up to do the eulogy. So she wasted the money anyways. Show up and I want my money back. From where? Where were you? We were in uh, Atlanta, our hometown. And she moved to Nevada. All right, and the defendant was in Nevada. Yes. And Uncle Martin died. Yes. Who called her and let her know he had died? I did. Okay. And when she, you called her and told her he had died, what was the discussion about her getting to Atlanta? Well, she said she didn't have the money. Um, the only way she will be able to get the money is if somebody were to loan it to her. And I told her I'll take care of it for now. She just needed to get here because we needed her there the following week. All right. And when you said, I'll take care of it for now, mm -hmm. did she agree that it was for now and she would return it? Yes, she did. Was there any discussion about when she would return it? She was supposed to pay it her next, within two paychecks. She was supposed to pay it to me. But it's and been 200 paychecks. did you know how paychecks. often she got paid? Yeah, every two weeks. Oh, okay. So within four weeks, she should have paid you. Yes. And I've loaned her money before, and she's been good on it before, but this time... I don't know what happened. Well, maybe she can tell us what happened. Hi. How are you, Ms. Morris? I'm well. Hello. Now, Honor. you're scheduled to do a eulogy at somebody's funeral and you don't show up. What kind of madness is that? Um, first of all, Your Honor, I am very, 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 very sorry about not showing up to the eulogy. Uncle Martin meant everything to me. And everybody grieves in their own ways. Yes, initially, when my cousin offered me to come to the funeral, she knew I was in a tough time. Financially, I'm a bartender, but I'm also a writer as well, a freelance writer, and I'm trying to build my career so money doesn't just come in and out of my hands. I would have never agreed to a loan from her because I know I cannot pay that loan back. I'm not in a position to be able to do that. Well, if Uncle Martin, who means the world to you, is dead and you don't have any money sure. and you want to get to Uncle Martin's funeral, you probably would agree to anything. Okay, and be that Am as I right? It well, you are right that I agreed to let her buy the ticket. The assumption that I was paying her back for the ticket is not what we agreed to. In but fact, that's what I'm I saying. You said I would never have agreed to a loan because I knew my financial situation. If you wanted to get to Uncle Martin's funeral, mm -hmm. so you didn't tell her the only way I could get there is if somebody loans me the money? I, I said if I got a loan. And by loan, I was even willing to go to a payday loan. I was willing to go anywhere aside from my cousin. Well, what's so the difference? A loan is a loan is a loan. What's the difference? Well, the di well we're not talking about my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. and the, no, no, no. A loan is a loan is a loan. The only way I can come is if I get a loan. And she says, okay, I got you. So now well, there's your loan. Well, no, but she didn't say a loan. She said, don't work. She said, don't run out and get a loan. She said, I got you. I'll take care of it. So the only way I can come is if I get a loan. Don't go get one from third party because I have it. Right. And so, so that why was, did you think that's a loan? I would think that that was my cousin who was looking out for me to get me a ticket. Why? A loan why would, would she be, do that? Why should a she loan do that would be for you? Because 
because she's my cousin, if she cared about me so much for me to get to Uncle Martin's funeral, she would have done that. You're In Uncle the past, Martin's goddaughter. If you cared so much to get to Uncle Martin's funeral, would you ask somebody for a loan? Um, I would do what I had to do to get there. There you go. I would, and I'll ask Including her for a loan. loan. Ask her for a loan. Yeah, I would ask someone, but I would prefer not to ask her for a loan. Because asking her for $20 is like asking her for a kidney. So there's no way that I would I would but put myself in a position. I didn't she, ask. She said you I didn't asked ask. Her. She didn't said ask. you've you asked offered. her in the past, so I guess she you've got offered. plenty of kidneys. And as a matter of fact, exactly. she offered, ma'am, and I did take her up on her offer. I have evidence here proving that she that there was no mention of a loan in an email that she and I both okay, kind of interacted. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. I'm Great. sure no one's I, uh, doing that for you. I'm sure that's Maybe still not healthy. Maybe they're going to work it out. Yeah. Yeah. But Maybe they'll figure out the decision right now. Okay, as are mine. Yours as are mine. Your Honor, as are mine. You finished? <laughs> And later, how is he responsible for your roots growing in his yard that he has no knowledge of? What's he, what is he supposed to do? Justice with Judge Maybelline. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Lisa Matthews, who is suing Kristen Morris for $563. When she offered, why would you say, oh, no, because that's like giving you my kidney, and I'm not giving you a kidney. Because I was in mourning of my uncle, mm. and I had a few days to get home to see my uncle, who was mm. also my father. Mm -hmm. okay. And the history is, Judge Maybelline, the reason why I would rather go and, and you know, get a 29% interest loan than the um borrow money from my cousin is because they don't have very good things to say about me. Um, they have their opinions about me for leaving the home. They feel like I turned my back on the family when I left to go pursue my own ambitions in Nevada. No, and so they're follow your no good boyfriend, pay all his bills. That's why you couldn't afford the plane ticket. Okay, ma'am, uh, I have a boyfriend, and so yes, he and I do work in harmony as a team. You don't know about team membership He's and boyfriend and relationship it. because you don't have one. Uh, so you I don't, don't want, want to work in tandem I don't want with your partner. Will. I can afford However, them, but I, I do have. Okay, you, I guess Angel. you do, but he cannot. You don't have anybody else to spend money on, honey. He so don't spend either. your money on you. Just, he can't spend money on nobody. Not even himself. He can't rub my back, keep me warm at night. He always runs a banner for me. He can also. So I make food for me every day and tell me how beautiful I am. I'm sure no one's doing that for you. I'm sure that's still not healthy. Maybe they're going to work it out. Maybe they'll figure out the decision right now. Okay, as are mine. Yours as are mine. Your Honor, as are mine. You finished? Whole lot of wasted breath. Your evidence. Yes. From Lisa. Yes, ma'am. I just booked your flight. It leaves 6.30 Nevada. I'm glad you'll be making it out here. I know Uncle Martin would have appreciated it. I took care of your ticket for now. For now. That phrase usually means giving it to you in advance, got to give it back. Your evidence, you presented. Loan. Come on with something else you want to talk about. Okay. Um, well, uh, in the past, ma'am, when she has loaned me, like, for instance, she loaned me $200 one time to help me pay for my car note when I first got We're not talking about the past. We're talking about just plane ticket. Right. And so in that time, she said that I need, you have two weeks, pay me back when you get paid. This time, there was no set date as to when anybody okay, was... Okay, so she didn't give you a certain time. She didn't give me a back. certain time, so therefore, I was unaware of the fact that it was a loan. But you gave me your evidence and said, I could prove to you that it wasn't by the emails between us. For me, and this email proof. says, no, this email proves it's a loan. If, if, if someone tells me they got me, then I'm assuming she that they got me. She for now. That, to me, is still Which means up it's in not forever. You go give me back my money. But she hasn't. The only reason she's harping oh, on it, ma'am, is because I didn't come. I wasn't able to attend well, you the know, funeral. Is, you know, you're right. You got a good, you raised a good point there. She may have forgiven the loan, and she may have not asked you to return it had you kept your word and come and done the eulogy. Sure. Not only did you not pay her back, you had the nerve not to show up after you get to Atlanta. Where did you go? Miss Maybelline, as she said, I was very, very close to my uncle. We left on bad terms. The last we spoke, we did not resolve issues that we had unresolved, and I was torn up about it. My family does not care for me very much. Who and my cares? Friends, Where did you go? I went to have some drinks. I was mourning, and I'm a bartender. I stopped drinking. I haven't drank in almost two years since prior to me coming to the So you funeral. went somewhere and got drunk? I got drunk, and I was irresponsible. Totally. 
totally irresponsible. I was sick the next day, and I felt terrible. And didn't know how to dial anybody's phone number? Well, actually... Didn't have anybody's number, couldn't call them and say a word? No, ma'am, that's not what happened. I did not have my cell phone. My cell and phone was borrow lost. cell phone? I didn't have anybody's access to numbers, ma'am. Who did you go drinking with? I, ha I went drinking with some friends, some okay, old friends. Okay, so why couldn't you use, use one of their phones? Ma'am, I was, the next morning I didn't wake up till the funeral Where was over. Where did you over. spend the night? I spent the night with my friends. I couldn't even stay at the house. I was so distraught all week. Wait I had a minute, been... you spent the night with your friends? I did. So when you woke up the next morning, where were your friends? They were there, but it was so. Why couldn't you use somebody's phone and call call one of your family members? Well, I did after I woke up, but I had missed the funeral. After I had oh, missed. Oh, so you slept all day? Well, no, I slept till about twelve o'clock in the afternoon, and by the time I woke up, the funeral they were already about to start the processional, take them to the you know obviously to the, the to the burial grounds, and I had missed it. I felt terrible. I wanted to get, but mind you, I had been helping them make arrangements for the funeral when I got there. I helped them cook prior to that. I stayed up with my family. That's what you were we supposed had, to do. I understand that, but I did that. So it's not like I just came and just dipped out. And but just you went were out scheduled and to do the eulogy. And I yes, have evidence that she was scheduled yes, to do the eulogy. She doesn't deny it. No, ma'am, I do not. No, you, you, I, I understand you were grieving. But your grieving cost you. I understand that. And what you have to accept is that I acted irresponsibly. And rather than getting drunk to deal with his death, I should have done something else. You're free to grieve any way you want but you're not free to accept the consequences. Yes, you're not free to reject the consequences. Yes, ma'am, but I So don't... she bought the ticket. You should have paid her back for the ticket. Now pay the girl. Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $563. You were irresponsible by not showing up to the funeral. I hoped you learned your lesson. And you will never know how sorry I am for missing our uncle's funeral, but hopefully this time you'll learn to worry about your own life. Coming up. How is he responsible for your roots growing in his yard that he has no knowledge of? What's he, what is he supposed to do? Justice with Judge Maybelline. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. Lynn McGee is suing Kevin Vernon in the amount of $789.98. Ms. McGee claims Mr. Vernon is responsible for her tree dying, and she wants him to pay for it to be removed. Mr. Vernon claims he's not responsible for the plaintiff's tree, and he claims he warned Ms. McGee there would be construction. In the matter of Lynn McGee versus Kevin Vernon suing him for $789.98, the cost you incurred to have a tree removed from your yard, but you blame Mr. Vernon for having to do that. Explain that to me. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, uh, my neighbor here uh, about a year ago uh, came to me to uh, explain that he wanted to install a swimming pool in his backyard. And, uh, you know, I had absolutely no problem with that. I was happy for him. And uh, I actually saw the opportunity for myself to join in the fun. And, uh, uh, but unfortunately, uh, you know, fast forward to five months ago, I was in my backyard with uh, my dog, Fluffy, and, and just enjoying the sun. And all of a sudden, I see Fluffy uh, chewing on something. And uh, when I looked, she was uh, chewing on a mushroom. This was a mushroom that, that was actually growing on the tree that I had in my backyard, my oak tree. A toadstool, Your Honor. A what? A toadstool. Toadstool? Yeah, it grows off the tree, bark about this, not edible. Okay. I looked around and found it on the, growing on the tree on the right side of my oak tree, which is the side where uh, my neighbor's swimming pool has what been installed. What type of tree was it? It's an oak tree. Okay. And that tree is about uh, 30 years old. It was already there when I moved in about 20 years ago. Uh, a tree, when something is wrong with a tree, you know, that can cause a lot of damage. Um, right. It's quite dangerous. So I did some uh, research on the Internet, and a lot of, uh, a lot of the articles mentioned uh, that if you find mushroom at the base of a tree, that can be an indication of a, a serious problem with the roots or the trunk itself. Um, so uh, I was really, uh, you know, quite worried about that. And then uh, some, of the, some of the articles also mentioned uh, dead wood. Uh, so I, 
at first I did not notice any of that, so I went back outside. Uh, I looked around and sure enough there was dead wood scattered all over that had fallen from the oak tree. What I had to do, since I know nothing about trees, I had to hire an arborist and uh, uh, she, she came in and actually you have a copy of her report. I don't have She's, anything yet. She you is haven't not, submitted um, it to me. She unfortunately could not uh, be here today because uh, she had a family emergency. But there you have a certified statement that, um, uh, you know, of her findings uh, when she, she came in and uh, did her investigations. She actually used um, a GPR, which is a ground penetrating radar, to image uh, the roots and found that uh, a lot of the majority of the feeder roots had been damaged. And that is really important because the feeder roots uh, absorb minerals and water, and uh, that impacts the way the tree feeds itself. Um, so uh, that's why we're here today. I mean, we've got a tree that the arborists say is decaying or was decaying and uh, had to be um, uh, But the something. roots were over in his yard. Yeah, it spreads out. Coming up. How is he responsible for your roots? growing in his yard that he has no knowledge of. What's he, what is he supposed to do? Justice with Judge Maybelline. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Lynn McGee, who is suing Kevin Vernon for property damage. So now, how is he responsible for your roots growing in his yard that he has no knowledge of. What's he, what is he supposed to do? Well, of course he has no knowledge, just, as, just like I don't have any knowledge right. of so that. so he had no knowledge that your tree roots, that's your tree, were in his yard. So technically he could have just removed all those roots out of his yard. I, 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 and he doesn't, he doesn't even know, how does he know that the roots that's in his yard is from your tree as opposed to an old tree that may have been in that yard before he bought the property or 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 40 years ago how is he to know that these were your tree roots i, I understand your honor i mean right. i know that he doesn't know but i don't know either that's my point so, so how neither is he of us know. Then? but the thing is the fact is is there there was a dead tree that had to be removed and the i think that the fact is the dead tree that had to be removed was your dead tree the fact is that this man did everything on his property that he had a right to do. Even if he had seen the roots, his contractor could have removed them without saying anything to you because that's in his yard. And he can take up anything he wants in his yard. And if it negatively impacts your yard, he's not responsible for that because those roots are your tree in his yard. Now, he could have sued you saying your roots damaged his yard. Then what? Judge Maybelline's verdict when Justice with Judge Maybelline returns. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. It's like you have nature. to prove that someone is at fault to bring them to court and ask them to pay you money. It's neither of your fault. Therefore, judgment for the defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. I'm going to chalk this up to being an honest mistake. And I hope we can go back to being good neighbors. Yeah, I'm sorry I came to this, and you're welcome to use the pool. production of entertainment.